Uh, we're just about ready to get started. Just uh, wanted to get everybody already into the room, and um, we'll wait another minute or so until we get everybody um, in, and we'll start in just about a minute. All right, well, we will go ahead and get started. It is now 3 o'clock, so thank you everybody for joining us today. Before we get started, I just want to mention that at the end of the presentation, I'm going to open it up for questions that you may have. Um, there's a little box down in the bottom left-hand corner that you can submit questions. Um, if there's any issues going on during the, the presentation, please send those um, there and I will see them. Um, but as um, I guess we are ready to get started now, so good afternoon. Um, again, thank you all for joining us today for Scandinavia 2017. Today I'll be talking about some of the factors that you may want to consider before you start planning your trip, um, some different travel options in Scandinavia, and then of course I'll answer your travel questions at the end of the presentation. Now some of you guys I know um, have registered already for our tours and are maybe looking for some extra information. This may not be exactly the webinar that you're looking for. We will do additional webinars in the future. Um, actually, before you leave um, to go on your tours, that will give you some information about maybe what to pack, um, how to exchange currency, and things like that um, to get you better prepared to go. But this is just kind of an intro into breaking tours, the services that we offer, and some different travel options in Scandinavia. So all right, so we will get started. So my name is Amanda Hancock. I'm the manager of sales and marketing here at Brecky Tours. Uh, if you have any questions that we don't answer for you today, please feel free to contact me directly by phone or email. And I'd also invite you to visit our website, which is brand new. Um, you'll find a variety of information about traveling to Scandinavia and beyond. So for those of you that may not be um, very familiar with Becky Tours and what we do, we are a family-owned business with very close ties to Norway. We can actually trace our origin to the late 1950s when Arnie Brecky, who is here in this lovely middle picture, um, he was a student from Norway and he worked his way through graduate school in America by conducting summer tours to Europe. Since then, we've grown and now offer a wide range of products and services, including escorted tours, customized tours, independent packages, and cruises. So the goal of Becky Tours is pretty simple. We wish to strengthen the cultural and ethnic ties between North America and Scandinavia by creating meaningful travel experiences. So when it comes time to start planning for your trip, um, one of the first considerations is if you should travel with a group, independently, or book a cruise. All provide different experiences, and so we've noticed some pros and cons of each that you may want to take into account when you're making your decision. Probably the number one reason to join an escorted tour is that it's a worry-free vacation. You can just sit back and relax. Um, someone else is there to do the driving and the luggage handling and solve any problems that may occur. Our escorted tours um, all include transportation, first-class hotels, most of your meals, an array of activities and experiences, along with the services of a knowledgeable and professional guide that is there to enhance and enrich your travel experience by providing cultural information about the country and the sites that you're visiting, as well as handling all those little details. An escorted tour is perfect for the seasoned traveler, as well as those that are traveling outside the U.S. for the first time. You will also take advantage of group discounts, thus you get more for your travel budget when you're traveling with a group. Enjoy a journey with group members that share a similar interest, and it's a way to make new friends. 
Now, our tour itineraries are developed based on the on our experience, and the, um, we do a lot of planning and research before we offer these tours to the public. Now, traveling independently allows you the freedom to explore at your own pace and choose those experiences that you want to include. Independent travel is suitable for those who are comfortable traveling alone and may have limited time or wish to stay in one place and explore the surrounding area. Now, public transportation is readily available in Scandinavia. However, if you need flexibility or want to visit the countryside, renting a car is actually an excellent option. It's pretty easy to get around in Norway and Scandinavia as a whole. Now, they luckily drive on the same side of the road as we do. Um, once you get the hang of the roundabout, you'll be doing OK. Although an independent package may appear less expensive, I would like to note that costs can quickly mount when you start adding food, transfers, and activities. Now, cruises have the advantage of being suitable for pretty much anyone. At the floating hotel, you wake up in a new location each day, and you only have to unpack once. You can also plan exciting excursions while in various ports of call. The only drawback really to cruising is that the amount of time you're in certain ports along with the amount of people all visiting the same area at one time. So if you have 3,000 people getting off the cruise ship wanting to go visit one particular site, you're going to be there with 3,000 other people. So whatever method of travel you prefer, there are some factors that you want to take into account when you begin planning your vacation. And for escort tours, you want to know the travel dates as well as the length of the tour. What destinations and areas of interest are included can also help narrow down your selection. Group size and what experiences you will bring home are also important factors. If you plan to travel independently, one of the first considerations is how to get from point A to point B. Traveling on your own means that you have to deal with the unexpected, so if this is something you are rather not comfortable with, you may want to choose an alternative travel option. And sticking with your budget is another factor to consider when planning your independent vacation. Um, costs can quickly balloon out of control if you aren't careful. Now, planning a large itinerary can be difficult, especially if you're unfamiliar with the locations and the different options. And this is where we can really help. So much um, like our escorted tours, but choosing a cruise can be a daunting task. So to help narrow down the field, you may want to review the included destinations, how much time you spend in these locations, the size of the ship, as well as the activities and experiences that are either included or optional. So when trying to decide on one of Brecky's escorted tours, you can rest assured that whatever tour you choose, you're getting a good value for your travel budget. We've had clients in the past that were worried they were spending too much, but afterward felt they received actually more than what they paid for. Most of our tours do involve a bit of walking each day. With that being said, if you do have mobility issues, I would suggest that you maybe contact our office and talk to one of our agents. We can help ease your concerns and make recommendations based on your activity level. We do allow for free time in some of the larger cities, such as Oslo, Bergen, Trondheim, Stavanger, Stockholm, and Copenhagen. Our tours usually start about 8 or 9 a.m., and we try to have you to the hotel no later than 6 or 7, but you're usually at the hotel well before dinner. All of our tours include visits to Bergen and Oslo, as well as a journey through the fjord country. In addition, you'll also get to see a safe church, which is one of the iconic symbols of Norway. So it's something that we feel that everybody that visits Norway should do. Uh, another thing that we also include in all of our tours is a ride on the famous Farm Railway. So it's ranked as one of the top 20 train rides in Europe, and again, it's something that all visitors to Norway should experience. We also offer luggage handling at each hotel, and our tour director will meet you at the arriving airport and stay with you until you depart the tour. You'll also notice that most of your meals are included in the itinerary. Um, we try to include special meals, such as a dinner at a local farm or at a unique location as well. And for your comfort, all of our tours are on first class touring coaches. Um, they have large windows, reclining seats, foot rests, and even bathrooms on board. So you can sit back and relax, and our bus drivers will chauffeur you around in style. And if you've ever seen some of those roads in Norway, getting up and down in those buses, these drivers that we have are excellent. And finally, all of our tours can be customized with pre- or post-tour extensions within Scandinavia or beyond. So to give you an idea of what to expect while traveling with us, um, we've kind of just compiled a short list of 
a day in the life. So your tour director will meet you at the airport in Scandinavia, depending on wherever it is you land, whether it be Oslo or Copenhagen or Stockholm. Um, you will depart the hotel between 8.30 and 9 usually. You'll arrive at your next hotel with some time for dinner. Um, we'll have short walks throughout the day for activities, shopping, food, and restroom breaks. The tour director will provide information while on the bus. Um, they keep you entertained with information, songs, language lessons, and more. And some time will be given for independent exploration or relaxation, whether it be um, out in the countryside or um, if we're in the city, so you'll have some time on your own to explore. So and then uh, before you kind of disperse for the day, your tour director will advise the group of kind of the, the schedule for the next day and what time you should meet. So if you're looking for a tour during a particular time period, then this list might be able to help narrow down your search. So for 2017, we have four departures in the month of June. For in July, we have eight. And in August and September, we both have one. So another factor was um, the destination. So we have the three tours this year that will include um, multiple countries. So Taste of Sweden and Norway, of course, includes Sweden and Norway. Uh, Captivating Scandinavia will include visits to all three uh, Scandinavian countries, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. Scandinavia in September will include visits to Stockholm. And then uh, it goes over to Norway, where you'll visit also Norway's your country and Bergen. Now, if you're looking for a tour that will visit Trondheim, you want to look at our Spectacular Norway tours or Scenic and Historic. If you, for some reason, uh, want to go to visit Stavanger and maybe climb Pulpit Rock, then you want to look at our Best of Norway tours. If you have roots, um, heritage roots in Telemark, then you may want to take a look at Norway Southern Pleasures or our Splendor of Norway tour. And then if you just want to kind of visit that heart of Norway's um, fruit orchards, then Loftus and Hardanger, we have those scheduled for Norway Southern Pleasure, Splendor of Norway, and Fjords and Farms of Norway. We include visits to those areas on these tours. Um, again, uh, if you are not really sure you know, when to go or what you want to do, if you're just a first time traveler to Norway, then you may want to look at our Best of Norway tours, Spectacular Norway, and Fjords and Farms in Norway. These are good general interest tours in Norway. They cover a variety of areas, and it's just a great introductory tour. If you're lucky enough to have visited Scandinavia before, then you might want to look at our Norway Southern Pleasures, which includes visits to destinations not really covered on some of our other tours, or Scandinavia in September, which visits the featured which features a visit to Stockholm and Norway during the first hints of autumn. And if you're planning to travel with children or grandchildren, then you may want to look at our family adventure tour. This is a great opportunity to introduce the next generation to Norway and their Norwegian heritage. And this year, it's um, even more exciting because we'll actually be traveling with a Norwegian family. Um, the tour guide for this tour um, is bringing her husband and children along, so it'll be lots of fun. And if you just want to see everything as, as much as possible in the shortest amount of time, then Cap Baby Scandinavia, which again covers all three countries, takes of Norway and Sweden, and then Norway Scenic and Historic would be my recommendation. So perhaps the number one consideration when trying to decide on which tour is the experiences that it offers. And there's really just so many experiences on our tours to name that I thought it would be better to get some highlights of each so that you can um, see what you can expect to enjoy on our escorted tours. Now, before we get started, we do have um, some discounts that we currently have available on some of our 2017 tours. So since these offers can expire at any time, I would recommend looking now while they're still available. So you can, visit, you can see um, these are our website. If you go to breaktours.com, and there's a little link on there that says special. And it will take you to this where you can select um, which tour you may want and learn about all the discounts. So, but it's, it's a nice little saving, $200 per person, so up to. Um, so it's a nice little incentive. 
So our first tour for 2017 is Spectacular Norway. Now these two departures are, it's one of our most popular tours and it's a great introductory tour for first time visitors. It's pretty similar to Best of Norway, but instead of, instead of heading south to Stavanger, you're going to travel north to Trondheim. So after spending two nights in Oslo, you'll drive over the Hardanger Vidda, which is the largest plateau of its kind in Europe, to Vos. And then the next day, you'll visit Bergen before you depart on the Flom Railway, which National Geographic Traveler magazine named as one of the top 10 train journeys in Europe. You'll drive through the world's second longest tunnel and ferry across the Sonne Fjord en route to Loen for a night at the luxurious Alexandra Hotel. So the next day, you'll want to definitely have your camera ready as you're going to cruise the Geiranger Fjord, past the Seven Sisters Waterfall, wildlife, and quaint little villages. You'll then drive the Eagles Road and the Trolls Path, which is famous for its steep and narrow hairpin bends. Your night is spent at the Scandic Solite Hotel in Molda, which is a pretty unique hotel. It looks like a ship sail, and it's right on the water. Um, continuing on to Trondheim, You'll drive the Atlantic Ocean Road and stop in Lude for a visit to Irgen Kisport, which was a bunker built by the Germans during World War II. You'll have lunch at a local restaurant, and if you go by the comments from some of our prior tour participants, it's the best seafood that you'll ever have. So the tour concludes in Trondheim, which was the Viking capital of Norway until 1217. And one of the most spectacular attractions in Trondheim is, of course, the Nidros Cathedral. It was built over the burial site of St. Olaf, which was the Norwegian Viking king who became the patron saint of Norway. Today it's the most northernmost medieval cathedral in the world and it's the second largest in Scandinavia. So quite a bit of Norway is included on this 10-day tour. You'll start in Oslo and you'll visit the Folk Museum, which is Norway's largest museum of cultural history, featuring the world's oldest open-air museum and large indoor collections. You'll ride, of course, the Flom Railway. You'll visit the uh, charming Hanseatic Wharf in Bergen. And you'll also cruise the Geiger Fjord, travel the Golden Route and Tolls Path, and look back at history at Irgen Kisport. You'll also get to see the fantastic sculptures and hear the stories behind the Nidros Cathedral in Trondheim. So our next tour is Taste of Sweden and Norway. Uh, it's a it's a nice tour that offers a sample of each country in one convenient package. <coughs> Going from east to west, you'll begin in Stockholm with a visit to the Vasa Museum. The battleship Vasa is by far the best preserved example of ship construction and naval warfare from the 1600s. And if you've ever been to this museum, it is, it is just simply amazing that ship and the detail that went into it. Um, it's, it's just a once in a lifetime experience, so highly recommend. Depart Stockholm, uh, you're gonna leave Stockholm on day four and drive to the university town of Uppsala for a tour of the Uppsala Cathedral. The cathedral actually dates back to the late 13th century and at the height of 389 feet is the tallest church building in the Nordic countries and Scandinavia. Then it's on to Dalarna, which epitomizes all things Swedish. You'll tour the Dala Horse Center. And so in the old days, the Dala Horse was used mostly as a toy for children. But in modern times, it's become the symbol of Sweden um, and has served as presence um, for ambassadors and, and uh, figureheads. We'll continue west to Oslo, where we'll spend two nights before heading into the Fjord country. In and out to Bergen, you'll experience the Norway in a nutshell. And your tour ends on day 10 in Bergen. So for those interested in visiting both Sweden and Norway, this is a great tour option. You'll also get to visit a variety of places in Sweden, including um, Stockholm, Uppsala, Stockholm, and the Varmland province. So Best of Norway is our next tour. It's, uh, again, another great tour for the first time visitor, especially if you want to include a um, a visit to Stavanger. So this is an 11 day tour which starts in Oslo and then travels north to Lillehammer. Before reaching Lillehammer, you'll stop at a farm and enjoy a tour along with dinner served by your gracious hostess. You'll actually 
She's got a dinnerware for 60 people. You'll eat on China. And um, last time I was there, she was playing the piano and we were singing. It was a lot of fun. So if you're lucky, um, like I said, you'll get a little impromptu dinner performance. So after you leave Lillehammer, you'll travel to Gubernstal and Oda Valley to Loam. There'll be time in Loam to visit the Fulstein Stein Center for a chance to explore the Stone Museum, or you can visit the local bakery. The Loam State Church is also in the town center, and it's within easy walking distance. After the stop, we'll continue across the Grotli Mountains to the Fjord Country. And then weather permitting, you'll drive to the Dolph Nibba observation point for a view of the Geirunger Fjord. Last time I was there, I couldn't see much of the Geirunger Fjord because it was too foggy, but the drive was definitely worth it. So the next morning, you'll take a troll cart up to the Bristol Glacier. Then you'll continue on to Althill Deacon's Weaving Workshop, which is a great place to pick up souvenirs for everyone back home. Tonight, you'll enjoy dinner and overnight in Fleischer's Hotel in Wolf, which was actually occupied by the Germans during World War II. The hotel was among the few buildings in Wolf that was not destroyed by the bombs. In fact, the hotel was treated very well by the Germans, and even the, fa the valuable family silver was in good condition after the war. Of course, it helps they were hidden under the dining room floor. The next day is your Norway and a nutshell experience with a train ride to Flum, a cruise on the Ireland and Narrow Fjords, and a ride on the thrilling Stalheim Road back to Wolf. And then you'll continue on to Bergen for a city tour before you head south to Stavanger. On the way to Stavanger, you'll visit the Nordbegin History Center in Avalsnes, which is home to the first kings of Norway and the legendary figures who often appear in sagas and songs. You'll spend two nights in Stavanger before you return home to the U.S. So some of the experiences on this tour include a tour of the Folk Museum in Oslo, a farm tour and dinner, visit to Hodel and Glassworks. You can ride the ski lift at the 1994 Winter Olympic sites in Lillehammer. You'll get the full Norway in a nutshell experience. You'll have a guided walk through Bergen Pontiotic Wharf. You'll visit the Nordbeacon History Center. And finally, you'll get to explore the Savanger book with your guide and on your own. Now, one of our new tours for 2016 was um, Norwegian's Norway's Family Adventure. We really designed this tour with families in mind, so you'll find family-friendly activities throughout. And we're offering this tour again in 2017 with a few changes. So this time, we're going to start in Oslo, where you'll meet your tour director, Kari, and her family, including her three children. And they will show you their homeland. So we'll, after two nights in Oslo, we'll drive to Flo, which is home of Norway's Bear Park. You'll get to see bear, elk, deer, and more in their natural environment before continuing on to Gol for overnight at the family-friendly Storfjell Hotel. There's a great swimming pool there. They have putt-putt and arcade. It's great. So the next day, you'll have an excursion to the nearby nature park, which is home to around 300 different species. You'll enjoy a tour of their farm, and you'll have some time to study the wolves, lynx, arctic fox, moose, yak, and reindeer. So day six, we're going to continue on to Fagernes for a visit to the Borgo State Church, which is one of the best preserves of the remaining state churches. We'll continue on to Flum, where we'll spend the next two nights. So day seven, we're going to have a walking tour of Flum, followed by a cruise on the Ireland Fjord to Underdahl, which is home to about 80 people and 500 goats. So you'll learn about the tradition of cheese making before you get to sample a little bit. The next morning, we'll ride the famous Flum Railway to Vos, and we join a family-friendly rafting adventure on the Vosso River. We'll continue on to Bergen the next day, where the group will enjoy a walking tour of the wharf and a ride on the funicular to the top of Mount Florian. So, and then your final last day, it's time to say goodbye to Kari and her family, and you head home on day 10. So the highlights of this tour include, of course, the family rafting trip, as well as a day at the um, nature park. You and your family will enjoy a ride on the Flum Railway, a fjord cruise, and sightseeing in Oslo and Bergen. So if you have some uh, family members that you'd like to introduce to Norway, this could be a great tour for you and your family. Norway Southern Pleasures is another one of our classic tours that we're bringing back for 2017. 
It's a great tour for those that may have been to Norway before, or for those with ancestral roots in the Telemark or Harlinger areas. So this tour starts in Oslo. We'll travel to Rukon, which is situated in Telemark. This is an area rich in history and cultural traditions, and is actually home to many writers and artists. After an overnight in Christian Sun, we'll enjoy dinner in a former cheese dairy en route to Charmi Salonger. Here you'll have a sightseeing tour before you head back inland to the Hardanger region. We'll spend two nights at the lovely Ullensfong Hotel in Fjordby Rooms. A day's excursion in the Hardanger region includes a visit to Kiosen Mountain Farm, the Hardanger Vita Nature Center, and a beauty shop. On day nine, the group will drive over the new Hardanger Bridge to Wolf, will avoid the train to Flom. You'll cruise the Ireland and Airy Fjords to Goodvangen, and then continue on another onto another fjordside hotel just south of Bergen. So after a day of sightseeing in Bergen, your tour will end. So some of the highlights in this tour include sightseeing in Oslo, Stavanger, and Bergen. You'll have visits to the Hadal State Church and the Norwegian Industrial Museum. You'll have four nights at fjordside hotels, and you'll have dinner in a former cheese dairy. Now, Norway is definitely famous for its thematic fjords, and many people that have traveled with us enjoy seeing old farm buildings and learning more about how their ancestors may have lived while working on the farm. So we created Fjords of Farms to appeal to both aspects. On this 10-day adventure, you'll learn about the past and present life on the farm as you travel through Norway's fjord country from Bergen to Oslo. So after a city tour in Bergen, you'll depart to Loftus, En route, you'll visit Stein So Fruit Farm, which has been in the same fam family for eight generations. Next, you'll learn about fish farming in Norway at the Hardanger uh, Aqua Center. And if you're like me, if you're thinking fish farm, that doesn't really sound very interesting. But I can guarantee you it's, it's much more interesting than what you believe. So um, it's very scientific, the way they grow the fish and how they harvest them. And, and it's, it's just really it's very interesting much better than I thought it was going to be. You'll enjoy a, a day in the Hardanger region before you explore the Kiosen Mountain Farm and the Hardanger Vida Nature Center. Now, as we proceed through Norway's fjord country, we'll ride the famous farm railway and cruise to Ireland fjord to the little village of Underdal. Again, it's the home of 80 people and 500 goats. So you'll have um, a little sample of uh, brown goat cheese, and listen to some folk tales and folk songs while you're there. En route to Oslo, we'll travel through the Baldur's Valley for a visit to the Farnerness Folk Museum, and we'll stop for dinner at a local grain farm. So some of the many highlights of this tour include a look into the past and present day life on the farm, a farm dinner with the Norwegian family, visits to the Baldur's Folk Museum and the Norwegian Folk Museum in Oslo, and three nights in fjord-sized hotels. Our next tour, departing July 22nd, is Captivating Scandinavia. Now, this tour includes visits to Norway, Denmark, and Sweden, and encompasses most of the countries, um, the most countries out of our Scandinavian tours. So, in Norway, you will visit Bergen, Flom, and Oslo, where you'll have almost a full day to explore on your own. From Oslo, we'll take an overnight cruise to Copenhagen. We'll have dinner and entertainment on board before you uh, can sleep in an outside cabin. You'll arrive in Copenhagen the next morning where you disembark. We'll have a sightseeing tour and learn that Copenhagen has a colorful history dating back more than 6,000 years ago. The first written record regarding Copenhagen dates back to 1043. The reigning monarch, Queen Margaret, the second can trace her ancestry back to the Viking Age, and that makes Denmark the world's oldest kingdom. And if you're like me, you love castles. Denmark has om almost as many fairy tale castles as it does fairy tales. And in Sweden, we'll visit the Fredericksborg Castle in Hillerod, Denmark. It was built as a royal residence for King Christian IV, and is now a museum of national history. Your first night in Sweden will be at the lovely Toftaholm Manor before you head over to Kostaboda and the Kingdom of Crystal. The Kingdom of Crystal is a region of Sweden which contains 15 glassworks dating back to the 18th century. The glassworks have become part of the culture of Sweden 
and examples can be found in many Swedish homes, recognizable by a small sticker at the bottom with the name. The next two nights are spent in Gothenburg. Now, Gothenburg was founded by a royal firm in 1621, and the port of Gothenburg is the largest port in the Nordic countries. We'll have a day to enjoy Gothenburg on your own, and then we'll continue the next day to Stockholm where a tour ends after a two-night stay. Okay, sorry about that. I had a little All right. Okay. Sorry about that. Well we we will now continue on. All right. Our next tour is Song Bolf Baldris, and this is a heritage tour recommended for people with ancestral roots in these areas. It provides an in-depth look into various um, areas within these and allows time for family heritage visits. You'll also travel with our genealogist, Jean Marthaler, who can provide assistance in locating your family ancestors, heritage, sites, and more. So technically, uh, typically this tour includes a small group of people uh, focused on finding their family farm, church, and other sites that, uh, in the areas that we visit. Now, quite a lot of personal service goes into this tour, and we encourage anyone that is thinking of joining this tour to please contact us and speak with one of our staff members. We'll also um, have you probably talk to Jean um, just so she gets a, an idea of where your family roots may be located so that we can um, make plans uh, for you to visit those while you're, while you're there. There are a number of church and museum visits included in this tour. Uh, church visits include um, both Underdahl, Slum, Hopperstad, Ernest, and Wolken. Now, folk museum visits include the Bolst and Baldrus Folk Museum, as well as the Otternus Farm. And uh, I'm not going to go into too, too much detail on this tour, as it really is a very specialized tour. If you would like more information, please give us a call, and I'll have you speak with um, Jean or Arnie, and um, we can get you signed up for this tour. So along with the chance to walk in your ancestors' footsteps, this tour will allow you to travel with a genealogist and visit a variety of churches and folk museums in Norway. Now, Scenic and Historic is probably our most comprehensive tour of Norway. It's also become one of our most popular tours in the past couple of years, thanks to a little movie known as Frozen. The reason for this increase in popularity is a visit to Rodos, which was the inspiration for setting. So starting in Oslo, we'll head north to Lillehammer before you arrive at the copper mining town of Rodos. It is one of the two towns in Norway that were designated mining towns, along with the silver town of Kongsberg. It has about 80 wooden houses, most of them standing around courtyards that are still in use today. We'll continue north to Siklestad, which was the site of the battle um, in 1030. It's uh, one of the most famous battles in the history of Norway, and it was a battle in which King Olaf II of Norway was killed. 100 years later, Nidaros Cathedral was built in Trondheim on the site of his original burial place. In Trondheim, you'll be treated to one of the best breakfasts in Norway before setting off on a sightseeing toward the city and the Nidaros Cathedral. Day eight, we'll start with a sightseeing tour of, um, I'm sorry. The next day, you'll drive the Atlantic Ocean Road, during which construction um, 
During its construction, it was hit by 12 European windstorms. The road was opened in July of 1989 and is now a cultural heritage site and is classified as a national tourist route. It's a popular site to film automotive commercials and it's been declared one of the world's best road trips. Um, it's also been um, awarded the title as Norwegian Construction of the Century. And if you've seen some of these bridges, you will see why. As you continue south, we'll visit the Bristol Glacier and we'll cruise the Ireland and Airway Fjords. We'll ride the Flom Railway en route to Bergen where the tour ends on day 14. So this is one of our longer tours at 14 days, but it does include a number of destinations such as Bergen, Wolf, Flom, Loen, Geiringer, Molde, Trondheim, Siklestad, Selbu, Rodos, Lillehammer, and Oslo. If you're interested in learning more about Norway's Viking history, um, mining, World War II, its religious history, or farming, then this tour might be what you're looking for. So this is a great educational tour, but you'll also enjoy a variety of Norway's scenery. Visiting Rodos and attending, you'll have, actually have a chance to attend the St. Olaf Festival in Trondheim while you're there. And it really makes this tour unique. Wonder of Norway is our shortest tour at nine days, and it's ideal for those wanting to get a sample of Norway before exploring heritage sites independently or combining their tour with a cruise or extension to Sweden or Denmark. Starting in Bergen, you'll travel to Wolf, where you'll board the Flom, board the Flom Railway. After arriving in Flom, you'll cruise the Fogne Fjord to Ballestrand for an overnight at the Kvignes Hotel. Now dinner at this hotel is quite a treat, so be ready to enjoy a great meal. And if you're brave, try the stinky cheese. The next day, you'll ferry back across the fjord and continue on to the Hopperstad State Church and the Veek Mountains to the Unsong Hotel in Lofthus. Now while you're at the hotel, be sure and search for the life-size wooden statue of Edward Grieg um, and his entourage. Uh, it's next to the timber hut where Grieg frequently visited and worked. On day six, we'll drive to the Telemark region and visit the Hardanger Veda National Park, which is home to thousands of wild reindeer. You'll enjoy a ride on the Coastal Bannon, which was the first cable car built in Northern Europe. The next morning, we'll tour the Industrial Museum in Rukon and stop at the Hedal State Church, which is uh, Norway's largest state church en route to Oslo. Now, your last full day in Oslo is spent sightseeing. And you'll visit Beagleland Sculpture Park, the world's largest sculpture park made by a single artist, and is one of Norway's most popular tourist attractions. You'll also visit the Viking Ship Museum. It's home to the world's best preserved Viking ship. And you'll see ship burials of the Viking Age and other unique Viking woodcuts. So some of the many highlights of this nine-day tour include a cruise on the Fjord Fjord and an overnight at the Kvignes Hotel in Ballestrand and the Ullensong Hotel in Loftus. You'll tour the Hopperstadt State Church as well as the Hardanger Vida National Park. And we do allow some free time in Bergen and Oslo during this tour so that you can go and explore on your own. Another new tour that we're offering for this year is Scandinavia in September. Now fall in Norway can be quite beautiful with the changing colors and little hints of winter to come. So we created this tour to encourage people to travel outside the normal peak season. Starting in Oslo, you'll spend a full day exploring the Vasa Ship Museum as well as Skansen, which is the world's op oldest open air museum. The next day, you'll enjoy a tour of Stockholm City Hall before flying to Oslo. In Oslo, you'll tour the uniquely shaped Opera House as well as Beagle and Park and the Viking Ship Museum. After two nights in Oslo, we'll depart for Fagernes for a tour of the Baldur's Book Museum. Now this is the fourth largest outdoor museum in Norway and it's home to an extensive collection of Norwegian folk costumes or bunad. The following day we'll tour Borgum State Church en route to Ireland. We'll cruise the Ireland Fjord and Nere Fjord to Gudfangen. After a night in Mom, we'll board the famous Flom Railway and ascend 2,800 feet within 13 miles to Myrdal. Here we'll switch to the Oslo Bergen Railway and proceed to Bolf where a tour will um, we'll meet our bus, and then we'll continue on to the lovely Solstrand Hotel in Ulf, which is just south of Bergen. 
The next day includes an excursion Bergen with a sightseeing tour before we fly home on September 19th. Highlights of this tour include visits to Stockholm, Oslo, Flom, and Bergen. We'll tour the Wisconsin Museum and Stockholm's Old Town before flying to Oslo for a tour of the city. And you'll have two nights at the Fjordside Solstrand Hotel in Oslo before you turn home. Now, if you do want to spend a little extra time in Scandinavia, all you have to do is ask us to arrange a tour extension. We'll work with you to create a customized tour package to any of the Scandinavian countries, Russia, and beyond. In addition to escorted tours, we also offer a variety of independent travel options, including fjord tours, self-drive tours, adventure tours, and winter packages. Our independent travel options can be found online, or if you prefer to have a customized itinerary, please just contact our office. So some of our most popular independent packages include the always popular Norway in a nutshell. This can be done as a three or six day package. You can also customize this package to include additional nights along the way. Nordic Delight includes visits to the Scandinavian capitals of Oslo, Copenhagen, and Stockholm. You can add Helsinki, St. Petersburg, Russia, or Norway to your country pretty easily as well. Now, Iceland has become a frequently requested destination in the past couple of years. One of the best ways to see this country is basically just to rent a car and drive the one ring road that circles the island. And this can be done in as little as nine days. Now, if you want to see the Northern Lights, you can travel to Tromso, which is situated in the heart of the Northern Lights Zone, for fun and adventure on our Northern Lights Explorer tour. And for those looking for a different kind of winter adventure, you can travel to Iceland. And it's a short getaway that um, offers an ideal location to search for the Northern Lights. We do have some additional independent packages um, online, so I would definitely recommend visiting the website. Now, if you're interested in just going somewhere, staying, and then um, making the excursions um, from a central location, then I would recommend Brecky's Shorter Treat. Now, it's located between Flom and Ireland. It's right on the fjord. I mean, there are literally steps from the fjord. You can sleep up to six people. It, like I said, it overlooks the Ireland fjord. It's available year-round. And basically, you're staying in the home of Arnie's Brecky sister. So she has rented out the, the bottom level of her home and allow some of our clients to stay there. And so it's got a kitchen, fireplace, um, living room, and you actually have an outdoor deck as well. And it's a perfect base for outdoor activities in the surrounding countryside. So if you enjoy hiking, biking, kayaking, fishing, and more. If cruising is your preferred mode of travel, then we can also assist you with your travel plans. Now, whether you choose to explore the coast of Norway on the world's most beautiful voyage, or if you want to explore the kingdom of the polar bear, we're happy to help you by providing advice, travel tips, and more. Now, Hertzgruten Cruises, um, these are what our, um, many of you might know as the mail ships um, that travel up and down the coast of Norway. They are, it's a great way to explore the northern reaches of Norway, but they do actually offer a variety of cruise itineraries to Spitsbergen, Iceland, Greenland, Europe, Antarctica, and beyond. They also, um, also offers early booking discounts. So if you're looking for a cruise in later this year or even in 2018, I would recommend booking early. This way you get the best cabin availability and whatever available discounts they may have. Another popular cruise um, is the Baltic cruise. It visits Germany, Estonia, Russia, Finland, and Sweden. And it's a great way to get a taste of the Baltic capitals in only 11 days. For more information about any of these cruises, or if you'd like to explore further cruise options, please feel free to contact our office, or you can visit us online. So now I'd like to open it up to some questions. Uh, before we get started, I'll answer some of the questions asked on the registration form and some frequently asked questions. Uh, if you do have questions that I don't answer, please feel free to, uh, to type your question in the chat box on your screen, which you'll see at the bottom uh, left-hand corner. And I'll try to answer those before we end the presentation. 
So some frequently asked questions that we get, what clothing should I pack? So um, I always recommend people bring clothing that you can wear. So casual clothing is the norm on our escorter tours, and you'll want to bring good walking shoes. You'll also want to bring a jacket and perhaps a raincoat. Other things you may want to pack include an umbrella or a poncho, snacks, medications, including over-the-counter medication like aspirin, sunscreen, a small day pack where you can store some of your essentials for the day, a water bottle, and snacks. Uh, and another question that we get often is, do we have to change planes? Now, all of our other tours include flights on Iceland Air from Minneapolis. You will change planes on your arrival in Keflavik, but you only need about 30 to 45 minutes for your layover. So the connections are super quick and easy. Your tour director will meet you upon arrival at your destination airport outside of customs. So wherever you are flying into for the start of your tour, whether it be Oslo, Bergen, um, Stockholm, or Copenhagen. <coughs> um, what are some additional costs? We do include all of your breakfast and um, some of your dinners during the trip. Lunches, however, are usually left up to you. Um, you can expect to spend about $5 to $15 for lunch in Norway. However, many of our clients find that if you eat a large breakfast and bring a snack with you and eat a decent dinner, you really don't need that much for lunch. So, other expenses are usually just more of a personal nature, um, laundry, drinks at dinner, taxis, and gratuity for the drivers and guides. I would recommend bringing a bag of snacks with you on your trip. Um, so these snacks could include um, trail mix, energy bars, chips, etc., and also pack an empty water bottle. The tap water in Norway and Scandinavia is perfectly safe to drink, and you can save two to three dollars bottled water just by refilling your own each day before you leave the hotel. On the way home, you can use that bag to store your souvenirs. Another question that we often get is, do people in Norway or Scandinavia speak English? And yes, um, even if you don't understand a, nor a word of Norwegian or Swedish or Danish, you'll be, you should be just fine interacting with local people. Most of them do speak um, English, and they start learning it at a very young age. When is a good time to travel? And the short answer is really any time. But it really just depends on you. If you prefer smaller crowds, um, being outdoors or traveling on a budget, then perhaps maybe the spring or fall would be preferable. Um, if you enjoy winter activities or want to check out um, the northern lights, then of course you'd want to come during the winter. But if you plan on traveling um, with a group and want to experience Scandinavia at its warmest, then you'll want to travel between June and August. But whatever the reason, we're here to help you get your travel plans off the ground, so please just give us a call or send us an email. And do we need a visa? Um, traveling to Scandinavia only actually requires a passport. However, if you plan to extend your trip with a tour of Russia, you will need a visa, which we can help you in obtaining. Now, some of the questions that were sent in on the form. How much walking is required each day and what kind of physical requirements? So a typical day on an escorted tour will have about two to three hours of walking, but it'll be broken up over the day. So some stops you'll only have a five minute walk, and others you may have to walk for 10 or 15 minutes. For those with mobility issues, um, you always have a choice whether or not you want to take part. So can I fly from Canada? Uh, yes, we can certainly work with you to arrange airfare from an airport that is convenient for you. So whether you're um, you know, uh, if you're not, because like I said, all of our tours include um, airfare from Minneapolis, but if Minneapolis is convenient for you, we can look for airfare from whatever airport is closest to your home city. If you have um, family members or places of interest that you wish to see that aren't included on any of our escorted or independent tours, you can request a customized itinerary. So we did have somebody ask about that. Um, we'll work with you to create a tailored travel plan on your preferred travel style, your family heritage areas, budget, and interest. And really all, it, all you need to do to get it started is just to give us a call. We can sit down and ask you what questions um, that we need answers in order to start creating that customized itinerary for you. Now, how many people are on our escorted tours? 
So it, it can depend. Um, there, it can vary, but typically you can expect about 30 or more on some of our more popular tours. And about 20 to 25 are some of our more out of the way tours, such as um, Southern Pleasures or Stone Cold. Um, we do operate only one bus, though. So at the most, you travel with 48 people on board, and that's it. That would be the very max. So if you do have um, n n another person asks about um, special dietary request. Yes. So if you're like me, you have food allergies or other requests that you need um, taken care of while you're on tour, we have a place on our tour application form to note those. And we do notify the hotels and restaurants ahead of time so that they can prepare your meal with those requests in mind. And somebody else asked, when is the best time to book? Um, honestly, sooner rather than later. And I say that mostly because of the airfare. The longer you wait, the chances of your airfare going up increases. And we've already noticed that July of next year is pretty full. So um, it's getting harder and harder to find um, reasonable airfares. So if you are interested in one of our escorter tours, we, um, we are off actually offering early booking discounts on some of our tours, so that's another reason. Um, you can save up to $200 per person. So I would definitely recommend taking advantage of that. So um, if we have any questions, um, now would be the time to type those in. You can type those in on the bottom left-hand corner. And feel free to ask me whatever you want. And I will try to answer those for you. Nobody has any questions? I answered everybody's questions. So, well, if nobody has any questions, I will go ahead and sign off then. Oh, I have somebody. Um, is there a book you would recommend, um, I'm assuming, reading before you go? Hmm, that would, uh, on what tour you would be looking at, I guess. Um, there's, there's some very good books out there that focus on different areas of Norway or where people may have traveled from. Um, if you have some place in particular that you're interested in, let me know. History and Scenic, okay. Uh, I will have to get back to you on that, Marcia. Um, let me, I will do some thinking and I will send you an email with uh, maybe some suggestions that you could check out. Um, Carol, you had asked uh, what are the charges for personalized tour. So we charge $100 um, a customized fee. Now, that $100 can be applied to your final balance um, if, you, if you reach a certain threshold, which is $1,500. And um, that $100 really goes into um, our planning and doing research and making sure that the trip um, you know, works well for you. So it does take a lot of time to plan those um, those itineraries. So that's just kind of our fee to um, to make sure that um, our time is kind of covered. But uh, we have a lot of people that you know once they that fifteen hundred dollars threshold is pretty easy to reach on a, a customized tour. So that's really not a problem. But if you if you have an idea of a, a tour that you want, say that you are looking at our Norway in a nutshell tour, and you just want to add an extra night or add a visit someplace. We don't charge a fee for that. That's just pretty standard. So, uh, do we offer hotel stays in ice hotels? Actually, yes, we do, Carol. Um, there is an ice hotel in Sweden, I know, and I believe there's one in Finland as well. Um, well, the one in Finland is a snow hotel. There's also one in Kirkenes, which is a snow hotel. Um, so, yes, we do offer stays at these places. The ICE Hotel in Sweden I know fills up very quickly, and so I would definitely recommend you might even start now <laughs> for next winter. And um, the Snow Hotel in Kirkenes and Finland I don't believe are quite as popular, so um, those you could probably wait a little while, but, but the ICE Hotel definitely um, sooner rather than later, because I do know that it fills up. Um, what is the ratio of participants to escorts? Um, for a custom tour. That really depends on you, Karen. Uh, if you, um, we've had um, people, you know, a group of as small as 15, or we've had a group as big as 50. Um, so really, 
if it's if it's a family, then you're probably expecting maybe 15, 20 people. Usually, we just have one tour um, director on on the tour. Uh, if you do request more, because if you're traveling with children or something like that, um, it might be a good idea just to have two. But that's something that we can certainly work with you. Um, when it's a custom tour, really, it's just I mean, we can do do it however you want and what will work for you. So. Okay, a uh, larger group of adults over three countries. Sure. Um, again, it's going to depend probably on the group size. Um, but most of our um, tour groups, I mean, we go up to 48 people with one guide. Um, so, and that's usually pretty manageable. If you if you think that they it might need to, then we can certainly do that. Uh, Carol, you asked if we have people who try to find family in certain areas. Uh, yes, we do. Her name is Jean. <laughs> so um, yes, Jean, uh, she is our genealogist. And she can actually put you in contact. If she can find um, re living relatives in a certain area, we can reach out to them. And you, would find, you will find many Norwegians are very excited and generous when it comes to their American relatives. I mean, we've had people that will invite them into their home and offer to drive them around and show them the sites and things like that. So it's very exciting to see. <laughs> and Carol, you asked if we offer agent rates. Uh, yes, we do. And I can get those to you if you would like. So that's not a problem at all. I can do that after this call. And anybody that has like something really specific on the tour registration form, I know we have some people that have um, pretty specific questions. I'll probably answer those for you via email just because I can give you a little bit more information. So, um, so if I didn't answer it on here, that's probably why. And same, um, Marsha and Carol, I will follow up with you guys um, directly after, after today's call. So does anybody else have any questions? Going once, going twice. Okay, well, here is our contact information. So you will have it. And please feel free to give us a call. And if you're interested in traveling 2017 or even 2018, if you haven't already received a brochure, um, you were out on the form. And we can send those out to you if you um, answered yes. And if you didn't answer yes or um, forgot to put in your address, then uh, give us an, a call or send us an email, and we'll, we'll get that over to you. I'll leave you looking out over the Geiringer Fjord. So it's a great way to end the afternoon and end the call. Thank you, everybody, again for joining. And please feel free to contact us with any further questions you may have. And I will be following up with um, you two ladies um, regarding those um, things that you had asked. So thank you all again, and have a great afternoon.